Over the years, I've found that Node.js is kind of strange in the world of backend development. Let's say you wrote some code for a backend API server, and you deploy that code to a machine with 4 gigs of memory and 2 CPUs. Then you start receiving traffic to your server over the internet. Now this is a Node.js server, which means, well, what does that mean? First of all, Node.js is not a programming language, JavaScript is the language, and TypeScript gets transpiled down to JavaScript. Also, Node.js is not a server. There are plenty of general purpose apps built with Node.js that have nothing to do with servers. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime environment. It's a thing that executes JavaScript outside of the browser, and most of the time we use it to build backend applications. And so since our app is written in JavaScript, that means it's a single threaded application. It can only utilize one CPU at a time, which is a big waste of resources. This is why we typically run multiple Node.js processes, each server running on a different port. And for that to work, we have to use a load balancer like Nginx, PM2 is a process manager, Kubernetes is a container manager, and then Heroku and Amazon are cloud platforms. But all of these are solutions to the load balancer problem. Now what's interesting is that if we chose just about any other mainstream language, then we can use true multi-threading, meaning your application running on a single process can utilize all of the CPUs on the machine. And also threads are a lot lighter than processes, they're faster to spin up and they take up less memory, ultimately making your application a lot more efficient. So it's kind of a bummer that in order to achieve maximum performance with Node.js, you have to spin up multiple processes. Or at least that's what I thought until recently. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so it turns out that there is a way to achieve multi-threading with Node.js, but I think I should demonstrate first why you would even want to use multi-threading when we have an asynchronous runtime, right? Node.js is async. You'd already handle concurrent requests, so what do you need multi-threading for? So here I have a little demo. I have a Fibonacci function. Then I have this thing called do fib, which is just wrapping the Fibonacci function inside of a promise. And the goal is to make this Fibonacci function asynchronous and make it so that we can evoke it multiple times concurrently. Of course, if you have enough experience with Node, you know that we can't do this, but we're going to try it anyway. Here I have promise.all, and I'm running do fib 10 times, hopefully concurrently. And then I'm going to print all the values, and let's go ahead and see what happens here. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so we can see it is evoking the function a few times. So we see that each individual time it evoked the function, it took about 470 milliseconds. And in the end, it took about 4.7 seconds to get it all done. So obviously it didn't actually execute all of these concurrently. It actually did it one at a time. It did it synchronously. Why? Because in JavaScript, you can't just take a synchronous function and then wrap it in an async promise and expect it to magically become async. So this is ultimately the big problem with single threading is if you do any CPU intensive calculations, it's going to block the entire event loop, which in turn is going to block your entire app. And that's especially bad in a server environment. OK, so this time around, we're going to do the same demo, except we're going to use worker threads instead. So we have our do fib function. And so inside of this do fib function, we're saying worker equals new worker. We're going to execute fib.js and pass in some arbitrary parameters there. We're going to say once we receive a message from the worker, we're going to log that and then resolve the promise. Then once we receive an error, we're going to reject the promise. And this is how fib.js looks. So we have our Fibonacci function here. We're getting the result and we're saying parent port dot post message. And so this is going to send the data from the worker back up to the parent. And so in terms of the main logic, we're doing promise.all with do fib 10 times, same as before. And remember before it did all of these synchronously, it did them one at a time. What we're hoping is that this is going to evoke these all concurrently instead. So let's run the code and see what happens. OK, boom, that was fast. So it took about one second for each worker to complete. Everything was done in about 900 milliseconds as well. So this suggests that these did not evoke one at a time sequentially. No, they evoked all concurrently. And we know that these all evoked on a different thread of execution because it didn't block the entire app. 
So there you go. That's proof that worker threads do actually create new threads. And this is not the same as using fork, because when you fork a process, that's creating a whole new child process, which has a lot of memory overhead. It's also very slow to spin those up. If you try to spin up a bunch of processes on the fly, it's not going to be very performant. So this is pretty awesome. The fact that we do have true multi-threading now. The API is a little bit funny, right? Passing messages around and all that, but it's not really that unusual. Nowadays, message passing is kind of a popular way of doing multi-threading. So one of the issues with using worker threads is that it's a little bit different than traditional multi-threading. With worker threads, each thread runs in its own context. It has its own block of memory. Let's say you have a one or two gigabyte buffer of memory and you want to pass that to a worker thread and then perform some transformations and then pass it back to the main thread. That's a lot of data transfer, especially in a server environment. So what you generally want to do with performance is not necessarily copy the data around, but rather pass ownership of data around. You want to share memory between threads. And fortunately, there is a way to do that with worker threads. And so here, what we've done is create a shared buffer. And what we're going to do is fill this buffer with five. And so a five, 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 five. And then we're going to create a worker and we're going to pass in that shared buffer to the worker. The worker is w.js, right? And then once we get a message from the buffer, we're going to go ahead and print that buffer. Ultimately, the goal here is that this w.js file should mutate the buffer directly without needing to copy it around. So here with w.js, we have the buffer and we grab the shared buffer from the worker data that was passed in from the parent. And then now we're going to mutate that buffer and we're not going to pass the data back to the parent. We're just going to tell the parent that we're done. If this works, this is the ultimate evidence that we're not actually copying data around, but we're able to mutate it between two different threads. So the goal is that by the time we get down here, the buffer should be 7777. So it should have started off as 5555. We passed the shared buffer to the worker. Then afterwards, it's 7777. So let's see if this works. So let's do it. And boom. Buffer before modify, 5555. Buffer after modify, 7777. So this is undisputable proof that we can indeed share a buffer of memory between threads without needing to copy that buffer around. And this is a really great thing when it comes to performance. Let's say you want to spin off some worker threads to resize images create thumbnails or convert PDF files or there's a lot of things you might want to do. And fortunately, we can do those in a very efficient way. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, kind of crazy, right? JavaScript is single threaded, but with worker threads, we can achieve multi-threading and we can do it in a relatively efficient way. Yes, we've always had web workers on the front end, but to be able to do this stuff on the back end is kind of a new thing. And I think it is kind of a game changer. I don't think it's necessarily going to replace other languages like Go and Rust and whatnot, but nonetheless, for folks who are already using Node.js in their stack, this is just another tool to help achieve higher performance. So hey, if you like the video, please like and subscribe, support a little YouTuber like myself, and thank you for watching.